giving glory and honor to Jesus the Son and to the blessed Holy Ghost the three in one. We praise God today. Amen. For being here, being able to stand before you. Amen. And get ready to bring this word and that we get ready to bring this word. We also want to give give thanks. Amen. Amen. And honor to our worship leader. We thank God for having the spirit. Amen. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So all of our deacons, amen, that are here serving, amen, amen, amen. You can choose their serving in prayer. We thank you, amen, and this word, amen, amen, amen. You can get to serving with the Black History Moment, get to serve, amen, thank you, sir, amen, amen. Deacon Janet Mark is our, our, our chairperson of our deacon ministry. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am, for your city. Thank you. Thank God for all of our trustees, amen, amen. Some of our trustees are battling, amen, and they're not here, but we know they're here with us, and we pray for them, amen, amen. Trustee Archer, we lift you up in prayer, amen, amen. You and Martin, amen, amen. Trustees slash Deacon Spellers, we lift you up and still praying to you to God continue to bless you, man. amen, amen, amen. Trustee Joan Jackson, amen. Pray God for you. And I know she's not a trustee, but she works with the trustee ministry so ably. Amen. Amen. Sister Deborah Barber. Amen. Amen. She's a financial character. Amen. We thank her. Amen. Thank her for, for her service. Amen. Amen. And one thing about our leaders, and I'll say this real quick before I move on. One thing about our leaders, our leaders serve in more than one capacity. Amen. Yeah. Amen. They lead in the ministry where, where, where which they are about to be known for. Amen. Amen. But they also serve in, in other ministries. Amen. And push other ministries. Amen. I like having our leaders in, 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 in other ministries because they carry on uh, the work of the leadership. Amen. Amen. When you have duplicated yourself through your leadership and then you put your leadership amongst the people, but then the people get a, get an even greater benefit of the pastor's leadership because the leaders are duplicating the pastor. Somebody need to understand that. That's good, that's good leadership. Amen. That's good leadership. Amen. 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 We are on the same page. We are on one accord. We have some of the best meetings when it be, be just us leaders. Amen. We have some of the best meetings you ever wanted to have. Why? Because we on one accord and that spirit runs through not only business, but it runs through worship too. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Give God some praise right there. Man, I will be remiss. Amen. Amen. If I didn't give God some praise and some shout out, amen. Amen to our our sound and music ministry. Amen. 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 She back there. Amen. Sister T back there with her today, amen. Praise God for her. Amen. Got that double anointing back there today, amen. That double portion back there today, amen. And the operators of cameras one and two. Y'all see cameras one and two, amen, on the post, amen. But the operators, amen. DJ Shibu and of course First Lady, First Lady Brown. Go ahead, stand up here. I know they can't see you on I know they can't see you on the Facebook, but that's all right. I can see you here. Amen. Praise God for you. Amen. Amen. Praise God. How many of y'all? And look at all of y'all. Amen. We praise God for the common for the congregation of the faithful. Amen. We, we thank God for the congregation of the faithful. Amen. Because it's the faithful that come out when it's raining. Amen. We thank God for the congregation of the faithful. Amen. That are here with us today. How many of y'all know that there is a word from the Lord today? Amen. We praise God that, that there is a word today. We're going to call your attention to a very familiar portion of scripture. Amen. Amen. When I say that, I am not joking. Amen. A very familiar portion of scripture. We're going to call your attention to the book of John chapter 30. Amen. Amen. And, and, and we might preach for some different parts of this of this chapter, amen, but we're going to focus today on John chapter 3, starting at verse 16. How, how much more familiar can you get than that, amen? John chapter 3, starting at verse 16, reading until verse 18, amen, and when you found that in your Bible or on your device, please help me honor God by standing to your feet, amen. And the word of God reads, <clears throat> for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth on him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God sent 
not his son to the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned, but he that believeth not is condemned already, because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of God. And the Lord ever add a blessing to the reading of his word, sanctify it in our hearts, and therefore make it really good for our souls. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you, God. We thank you right now. God, that we're so thankful for your love, God. We thank you right now. We're so thankful for your grace and mercy. Thank you right now. And now, God, it is preaching time. It is that time to proclaim the word of God. And God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes preaching easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes hearing your word easy. God, we pray for the type of anointing that makes doing your word real easy. And now, God, we pray that, that you dip us down deep into that well of anointing. Bring us up dripping wet that we might be able to preach a word from on high. God, we thank you, God, for partnering with us in the anointing of God right now. Partner with us in the covering of your covenant. Cover us, O oh God, with the blood, the precious blood of Jesus. That the devil will know whose we are and who not to mess with. In Jesus' name we do pray. And let the household of faith say, Amen. Amen. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Today for our time together in the word of God, I just want to preach for a little while uh, uh, from our year-long focus, amen, and theme, amen, uh, which is trust the process. We know that comes from Proverbs 3, 5 and 6, trust in the Lord with all thy heart and lean not unto thy own understanding, but in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. I'm here to tell you that, that, that that's our hallmark for the process today, amen, that we got to trust in the Lord, amen, uh, that we got to move like God said, move, we'll go where God says go, amen. Uh, because we're going to trust the process. And today's sermon, amen, uh, amen, today's sermon is titled, uh, Trust the Love, amen, uh, Trust the Love. Uh, church, I believe that it will be hard uh, to trust the process of God if we don't come, uh, come to trust the love of God, the love that God has provided to us. Uh, can I tell you, to trust the love means that you know the heart of God. That means that Look, and, and to know the heart of God means that you understand what, what God's plan is for you. Uh, knowing the heart of God means that you understand uh, the mind of God concerning you. Uh, that, that means that you're going to know the heart of God, that you that you know beyond a shadow of a doubt uh, that God wants what's best for you. Amen. Uh, see, can I tell you that's knowing the heart of God. It's good to know the heart of God. I'm going to tell you why, because sometimes uh, you may not understand the action, so somebody going to get that in a minute. Uh, see, you got to be able uh, to trust the love of God. Uh, that when you, and, and look, uh, when you understand and even when you don't, uh, you got to trust the love of God uh, when things are stormy or when they are calm. You got to trust uh, the love of God uh, when others offend you. Uh, you got to trust the love of God even when God offends you. Oh, what? Uh, yes, did you know that Jesus often offended folk all around him and not just the religious order of the day, not just the scribes and the Pharisees and the Sadducees and Herodians, amen, but even his own disciples and followers, amen. That's why Jesus said in Matthew 11 and 6 that blessed are those that are not offended in me. See, when you can get to the point that even when the Lord says something, even when the Jesus, even when Jesus tells you something, amen, that you don't understand and sometimes it may cause you not to agree with it, amen. You got to be able to understand that he is not trying to offend you. See, those that are not offended by Jesus, are the ones that can handle the truth. Amen. Uh, sometimes folk can't handle the truth. Amen. Uh, but he gives the truth in love. Uh, and if you can handle the truth, uh, they, they can only, you can only handle the truth because you know uh, that even if it hurts, uh, they know that the love of God is the reason behind it. Amen. Uh, it is the reason why. Uh, see, those are the people uh, that have come to know uh, the heart of God. Amen. Uh, can I tell you the heart of Jesus uh, and the heart of God. Uh, amen. And they are trusting in the love. Uh, somebody need to go ahead and say trust the love. Amen. Trust the love. 
Amen. See, church at the core of trusting the process of God has to be the fact that you trust the love of God. See, when I began to look at this third chapter of the book of John, I began to see in this encounter um, with Nicodemus, amen, that Jesus was giving Nicodemus a lesson in trusting of the process, amen, and trusting in the process, but also it was a lesson that where he was going to have to find himself trusting in the love uh, and the love of God. Uh, see, can I tell you the story? Just, just a little background real quick. Uh, Nicodemus came to Jesus uh, and he really thought he was on to something, amen? Uh, because although he was a Pharisee and, 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 and he was of those that wanted to question Jesus, uh, and he was of those people that wanted to dissect uh, Jesus' teaching. Uh, he was of the Pharisees who wanted to discredit Jesus uh, and to derail his ministry, uh, even though that was the group that Nicodemus belonged to, uh, Nicodemus was enlightened. Come on, somebody. Uh, see, Nicodemus said to Jesus that I know uh, that you are a teacher sent from God uh, because no one can do the miracles you do uh, except for God be with you. Come on. Uh, oh, that was a truth, y'all. Uh, can I tell you that today that Nicodemus thought that he was on to something because he had figured out the, the how uh, behind Jesus' miracles. Uh, Nicodemus uh, had to be thinking to himself uh, that Jesus, uh, the teacher sent from God, uh, and me, uh, we are about to discuss some ideology and we're about to discuss some theology and we're about to discuss some religion and some rituals, uh, some, some traditions, and we might even get around to talking about the Torah, which is the law of God. Uh, oh, we're going to have a good old time because we don't want to accord. Uh, I understand him and I know he understands me. Can I tell you, Nicodemus thought he thought uh, that he was only something because he thought that he could understand uh, and accept the how behind Jesus. See, uh, when nearly all the other Pharisees could not, uh, they didn't want to know Jesus was the Messiah. They saw the signs, uh, amen, that he was the light. He was the light sent from God. Uh, they heard the testimony of John the Baptist, uh, but they, they saw the miracles, but they still did not want to believe it. Uh, Nicodemus thought he was on to something. Can I tell you? Uh, the how for Nicodemus was easy. It was easy, even though he was the only one maybe that was professing it. To, the how was easy. Uh, he was good with the how, uh, how Jesus was doing it. Amen. Uh, because he could accept the how Jesus was doing it without any real change to himself. Can I tell you something real quick? Uh, sometimes uh, we look for the easy way, the way of least resistance. We look for the way sometimes uh, where we we be in the mix of the process, uh, where we got where where we can do as little as possible and still reap the rewards uh, of, of what God has. We look for the basic thing. Uh, we look for the base thing. What is the least thing? What is the most common denominator? What is everybody else doing? I'll do that. Uh, but when it comes to going the extra mile, standing up, standing out, stepping out, going forward, uh, I ain't doing all that. It don't take all that. Uh, and this is what Nicodemus was doing. Uh, when he was going ahead and he was, he was admitting the obvious. It was the obvious that Jesus was sent from God. It was obvious that Jesus was of God. It was obvious that Jesus had power from God. Uh, but, but look, uh, I want you to understand, because he was able to admit that, uh, that was just a declaration, but that was not a proclamation, because uh, he wasn't doing anything but saying what he already saw. Uh, see, he knew he didn't have to change himself, but sometimes, amen, uh, in order to get all of what God has for you, uh, you got to step beyond your comfort zone and you got to step out on faith, amen, and you got to look for the change that needs to be made in you. See, there was no change because Jesus came from God. There wasn't the change, amen. And I want you to understand, Jesus didn't come just to be flattered and recognized. Somebody needed to get there. If Jesus wanted to be flattered and recognized, he could be flattered and recognized in heaven because there were angels that were there. There were angels that were assigned to to, to fly around the throne crying holy, holy, holy all day 24-7, 365. It was where he went. 
everything bowed down to him because he was the creator of all. He was the creator of all, the sustainer of all, and through him did all things consist. And he already had glory in heaven. He didn't come to earth. He didn't come to earth to be recognized. So the how, the, the fact that Nicodemus recognized the how, amen, that didn't mean anything. Jesus didn't come just to be recognized for the how. Jesus didn't come for the how, but he did come for the why. Call somebody you need to get that right now. Jesus came for the why. And what was the why? Well, can I tell you like just like this? Jesus came for the love. Somebody need to get that. Amen. It was the why. It was the why that caused Jesus to ignore Nicodemus' confession of truth and glory and honor concerning him and tell Nicodemus, just like the T.I. is, verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. It was the why. It was the why that despite Nicodemus' lack of knowledge, lack of understanding, and his protest, that he just didn't understand it and just don't make no sense that, that Jesus continued to tell him huh, that he needed to be born again huh, of the water and of the spirit. Huh. It was the why that caused Jesus to stay, huh, to, to stay persistent huh, in the sharing of the process to Nicodemus. Huh. It was because of the why huh, and the why was the love huh, that Jesus continued to tell Nicodemus huh, that he needed to change. Somebody needed to get that. Huh. Nicodemus understood the how, huh? but he didn't understand the why yet. Huh? He didn't yeah, because he didn't understand the why. He couldn't trust the why. Amen. But Jesus was laying out a process for him huh, to have eternal life. Jesus was laying out a process for him huh, to be next to him, to be close to him, to be in relationship with him. Huh? Oh, but then he was did that. Look, he couldn't follow the process because huh? he couldn't understand the why. Huh? He had to learn to trust the love. Huh? Can I tell you, Nicodemus was presented with a process that was going to change his life, amen. But in order for Nicodemus to accept what he needed to change in his life, he was going to have to trust the love. Oh, come on, somebody give her. Look, he would have to trust the love even before he could trust the process. Somebody need to go ahead and give God some praise right now. Amen. He would have to trust the love. I want, to, look, I want that to be a word to you today, amen. As we go forward, amen. In this process that, that God has us on, we know the vision that God has laid before us. And we want a new church. We want another church. And there's some other visions uh, that we have, amen, that we want God to do and what God to move in. Uh, well, I'm here to tell you, we accept the vision. We believe the vision. We speak the vision. We pray yes, the yes, vision, yes, amen. Yes, uh, but we're in the midst of the process. Uh, and as we go through the process, uh, there might be some ups and downs and some turnarounds and some all arounds and some other ups and downs and all that. Amen. But we trust the process. Why? Because we know within the process is always the love of God. Come on, somebody. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So if I could speak just for a little bit to, to Nicodemus about this process or any any process that the Lord presents to you, amen, and since you are here, amen, you can listen in on me and Nicodemus' um, um, conversation. Know this, when the Lord is the, when, look, when the Lord is in the process, amen, when there is a process, excuse me, Wherever there is a process, love is in the process. Amen. Amen. And you can trust the love. Oh, watch this. So Nicodemus was here. Oh, look. And along with all the rest of you, this is what I'll tell you. First thing I'll tell you that you can trust the love because God's love is true. Amen. The Bible says, amen. The Bible says in John, in John 4, in 1 John 4, 16, that God is love. And if God is love, that means Jesus love as well. Amen. So understand this. Uh, this love is not just an emotional thing. Amen. In the kingdom of God, we're talking about God's love. In the kingdom of God, love is an attribute of our holy God. Amen. I love how you prayed today. I love how you prayed today, Deacon. Amen. And you kept on calling them the holy God, our holy Father, our holy God. I like that. We need to reference who God is. A whole lot of folk got God's little G, amen. That they follow.
follow and uphold. But there is but one true. There is but one living. There is but one holy God. Oh, he is our Father that are in heaven. Hallowed be thy name. Come on, somebody. Amen. This, this is the love that we need to trust. A love that is pure and a love that is holy. See, when Jesus spoke this truth to Nicodemus, can I tell you, oh, when he spoke the truth to Nicodemus about being born and the, and the witness that he bore, amen, he said we. Oh, you better get that. He said we. Jesus was standing alone. There was nobody around him, but he said we. Because see, Jesus always understood and knew that even though he was a man, he was, he was in the flesh, but his divinity was covered up. And in his divinity was the three in one. Somebody need to get that. Jesus was talking about the we that is God. Elohim. Amen. The plural of God. That mean, and it don't mean gods. It just means the three in one. The trinity. The Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. Amen. Amen. Each bearing witness of the other. And each being incapable of telling a lie. If God talks about Jesus, he ain't lying. If Jesus talked about God, he ain't lying. And if the Holy Ghost talked about Wolfram, he ain't lying. But they are incapable of telling a lie. And they are incapable, amen, of bearing a false witness. Amen. Because they are holy. Amen. In verse 11 of this chapter, Jesus tells Nicodemus that we speak what we know and what we have seen. Amen. And it is implied out of, and we speak out of who we are. We speak out of, watch this, we speak out of who we are and who are we? We are love. Somebody need to get there. Somebody need to understand it because God is love. Jesus is love. The Holy Spirit is love that we can trust the love. The next thing I want to tell you, amen, is this, that you can trust the love because love, because love is always so giving. Come on, somebody. Love ain't selfish. Love ain't a hoarder. Love ain't a keep of life unto himself. Amen. But, but love, oh God, don't that sound like God? But love is always giving. But you look at John 3, 16, the A and the B part is said for God so loved the world that he gave his only because Son, can I tell you today, amen, that God's love is more concerned about giving and giving what it takes to take care of you and of me. Can I tell you, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, amen, understand that God gave the best that he had. He gave heaven's best, amen. He gave, look, you know somebody give you the best they got when they give you up themselves. Come on, somebody. Amen. She they ain't just gonna look. I used to be the kind of person that if you had that that you want something that I had, I would buy you one rather than to give you some. Come on, and I, I used to think, amen, that that wasn't selfish, but in a way it was. That I didn't want to give you up what I had. Like I said, I'd rather buy you one than give you some. That's how I used to think, amen. I thank God that God changed me in that. I used to get one to share nothing. My wife the when we first got married, she she knew I was the most selfish person in the world. Because I was used to being all by myself all the time. Amen. I didn't have nobody in my life I felt like sharing with. Amen. At that moment. Amen. But I thank God for change. Amen. Yeah. Come on, somebody. Yeah. Amen. Can I tell you that you can trust God's love? Because God's love loved us so much that when he gave heaven's best, he didn't just give it for a moment. Amen. He didn't just give it on a loan. Amen. But he gave that that love to do a job and complete a job where well, that love had to give his whole self. Come on, somebody. He gave a love that had to give his whole self. See, some folk want to give you a love where they just give you a part of it, man. It Amen. They don't give you the best part. They say the best part for themselves. But God gave you a love where he gave you the best part. Matter of fact, Romans 5 and 8 says that while we were yet sinners. Come on, somebody. Who wanted to give you something when you were wretch undone? But Romans 5 and 8 said while we were yet sinners. Well, what did that mean? That while we were seeking deep and sin far from the peaceful soul. While we were yet sinners, very badly stained within. 
while we were yet sinners going our own way while we were yet sinners walking in disobedience while we were yet sinners still walking in the darkness amen 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 but this is how God God demonstrated his love for us because God loved us while we were yet sinners he said he proved his love he demonstrated his love for us because God sent his son Jesus can I tell somebody God gave his son Jesus and he gave him not just to be here on loan not just to walk around for three and a half years and come on back up to glory but he gave his son to die for us not only die for us but to die in our place it should have been me it should have been me uh, on that cross. It should have been me uh, getting them lashes. It should have been me uh, with that crown of thorns. It should have been me uh, being pierced in my side. Uh, but instead of being me, it was Jesus. Come on, somebody say, oh, uh, oh, it is Jesus. Uh, come on, somebody. And if you can say, oh, it is Jesus, uh, well, then you ought to be able to say, oh, I can trust the love. Come on. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, Jesus, amen. Uh, Jesus died in our place. Amen. Uh, oh, if you can't trust that love that God gave, who can you trust? Oh, come on, somebody. Look, here's my third point. You can trust the love because God's love knows how much you need the love. Oh, come on, somebody. There are some folk that can see you need something real bad. And the bad that you need it, the worse they don't want to give it to you. Amen. Either they're going to jack up the price. Amen. Make you pay a penalty. Amen. But they ain't give it to you free and clear. But the Bible tells me that freely as you have received, freely give. Now when you see folk in need or something, you ought to go ahead and help them if you can. You ought to go ahead and deliver them if you can. You ought to go ahead and bless them if you can. And that's one thing I can tell Nicodemus about why you should trust the love. Because the love, God's love knows how much you need his love. Oh, in the C part of John 3, 16, it says that whosoever believeth on him uh, should not perish uh, but have everlasting life uh, who shall ever believe uh, what that what in the world uh, they're talking about uh, those that are in need uh, those that are look uh, those that are facing uh, a perishing situation uh, see can i tell you uh, we are born in this world i heard it said uh, that 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 we weep huh, when folk are leaving, huh, but we rejoice huh, when they're coming in. Huh. But I'm here to tell you it, that I've heard it said it ought to be the other way around. Huh. We should weep when babies are born huh, and rejoice when we go on back to our reward huh, because we're done with this earth. Babies that are born huh, are being faced with a hard life. Huh. They are being faced with a... It's, with the issue of sin huh, that was not of their own making. Huh, they were on the road to perishing. Huh. We are on the road to perishing. Huh, but the Bible said huh, that whoever believeth on him huh, should not perish. Can I tell you, huh, the road to perishing is the road to hell. Huh, and we are all on that road without Jesus. Huh, but God saw need. Huh, he saw how bad, huh, how bad we needed him. Huh, how bad he needed his love. Huh, how bad he needed that, how bad we had to have it. And so he made a way by giving his son. And all we got to do is believe on him. See, in this process found in John 3 uh, or whatever process uh, you are in, uh, you may have no idea uh, how bad you need to trust the love of God. You may have no idea uh, while you are in the process of God uh, that the devil is still desiring uh, to sift you like wheat. Uh, but don't you know when Jesus told Peter, uh, Peter had no idea. Uh, Peter thought he had came through the rough. Uh, he, Peter had already denied Jesus. Peter had already Turn back on Jesus. Jesus had already called Peter back. Jesus was already back in communion and fellowship with Peter. Peter thought everything was gravy, amen. But he didn't know that the enemy was still after him. Peter had no idea how bad he needed the love of God. How bad he needed the love of Jesus until Jesus told him the enemy designed to sift you like wheat. But I prayed for you. Oh God, can I tell you, somebody prayed for me. Had me on their mind Took a little time and prayed for me Well I want you to understand That I'm glad today That Jesus is still praying for us That he is still loving on us And loving us To come and see about us He will not forsake us 
forsake us. He won't leave us. He won't never leave us alone. No ever alone. Oh, can't you trust that kind of love? Right there, that kind of love. That know how bad you need him. Even before you realize you do. Amen. I'm here to tell you uh, the enemy still wanted to attack you. Uh, the enemy still wanted to stop you. Uh, but the love, uh, the love of God knows. Uh, and the love not only does the love know, but the love is on the job. Uh, come on, somebody. Uh, see, Nicodemus thought uh, that he was good uh, until Jesus laid it off for him. Uh, you must be born again. Uh, see, he thought, you know, when Jesus said that, uh, he couldn't understand that he had all kind of uh, all concepts and pre how can a man be born again when he is old? And Jesus had to break it down, break it down, break it down to him. And look, I used to feel sorry for Nicodemus until I studied this thing real good. I used to feel sorry for Nicodemus. See, well, he, he, he had no idea about being born again. But don't you know that it talks about being born again in the Old Testament? Oh, God. I didn't think that was in the Old Testament. If I was teaching, I'd show you exactly where it was. Amen. But they talked about and he was opposed. That's why Jesus asked him, ain't you a master of this thing? Ain't you, ain't you a ruler in this thing? Ain't you an expert in this thing? You come talking to me like you on the same level with me. That's good if you think you're on the same level. But where's your anointing? Where's your revelation? Where's your insight? Oh, you know what? You ain't got those things. Cause you ain't trusting in the love. Come on, somebody. Because I put it in the word for you to find it. I love you enough to show it to you. I put it in the word for you to find it. But now I shot. I love you enough to show it to you. And you still don't want to take what I got to say with you. I'm going to tell you the love is here. The love is here to save you. If you will only trust in the love. See, when you trust in the love, you have faith and belief in the in, in the giver of that love. Come on, somebody. Oh, you can have her. You can have trust in the love, but not have faith and trust in the in the giver of the love. Can I tell you love by itself? Love ain't gonna do nobody no good. Can I tell you love by itself? It don't do nobody no good. It ain't no good to know of love and know about love to but until you can see love in action. Somebody need to get there and love in action is God. Can I tell you God is an action being let there be. God is an action being let there be. God want to put a let there be in your life. Not only do he want to be a let there be light. Let there be a planet, moon, and stars. But God wanted to be a let there be in your life. And what does God want to let it be? God want to let it be love. Come on somebody. And not just any kind of love. Can I tell you the enemy trying to pervert love. The enemy wants to pervert love and make you think love is this and love is that. And love is a physical, natural thing, but it ain't. Oh, it's a spiritual thing all day long and twice on Sunday. Amen. It's a spiritual thing and God wants it to be love in your life. So God wants to speak a word in your life and let there be. This is what he's trying to do for Nicodemus. Let there be love in your life. Nicodemus still ain't getting it. But Jesus is telling him about salvation and about being born again. Jesus is trying to let him know let there be some love in your life. Let me be in your life. Oh, God. If God wanted to be, let there be love. But then God needs you to let him be in your life. Come on, somebody. Let him be in your life. The lover of your soul. Let him be in your life. The healer of your body. Let him be in your life. Oh, your deliverer. Amen. Let him be in your life. Your champion. Let him be in your life. Your victory. Let him be in your life. Your love. Come on. Come on, somebody. Amen. Can I tell you? And when you trust in the giver of the love and let the giver of the love be in your life, then you won't perish, but you will live and you will have everlasting life. Oh, but can I tell you? You got to trust the love. Amen. You got to trust the love. And look, can I tell you that my last thing before I get home, before I go home? Amen. Amen. You can trust the love because God gives you something to believe in. Come on.
Come on, somebody. God will give you something to believe in. In verse 17, it said that God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, um, but that through him the world might be saved. Oh, you got to get this. When God is presenting love to the world, he didn't present the world. He didn't present love to the world to come in and condemn the world and tell the world it was worthless and no good. He didn't come in to condemn the world and send the world to hell. He didn't come in to condemn the world. Amen. And pass judgment on the world. But he came to pass love into the world. God had given you something to believe in. See, God loved the world so much that while the world was contemptible and while the world was so enough condemnable, while the world was guilty as charged, God didn't charge you. See, that's not why he sent the, the love. See, that's not why he sent Jesus. He didn't send Jesus into the world to condemn the world, uh, but that to him the world uh, would be saved. Uh, you gotta understand that being saved through him uh, is being saved. Uh, it said, He that believeth in verse 18. Uh, oh, if you believe uh, on the Father and the Son uh, and the Holy Ghost, uh, you will be saved. Uh, if you believe, amen, uh, you will not be condemned. Uh, but oh, but can I tell you, if you refuse to believe, uh, see, if you refuse to trust the love, uh, and can I tell you uh, there is a level to this thing uh, that yes you can trust God uh, but you can still not trust the love uh, come on you can believe in God uh, but you can still not trust the love uh, and I'm here to tell every believer right now uh, um, that no matter what uh, no matter what uh, you might can't trust this thing or that thing uh, but you can trust God uh, and you can trust the love because uh, if you don't believe in the love uh, watch this if you don't believe it says if you don't believe on him uh, you can give already. Huh? If you don't trust the love, I'm here to tell you, huh? you're going to walk a life of being condemned. Huh? You're going to walk a life of being less than your privilege. Huh? You're going to walk a life of not getting what God has for you. You're going to walk a life of not being able to help them that come in your path. Huh? You're going to live a life, amen, with no light. Huh? See, you're living a life with no light. You ever see a car coming towards you, amen, on the road at night huh? that don't have its full lights on, huh? uh, don't have its lights on. Huh? That's a scary thought, amen. Huh? Some of us are walking around like scary Christians, amen, because we ain't got no lights on. Come on, somebody. Walking around like a scary Christian, because we ain't got no faith on, amen. But if we believe in the love, come on, somebody. If we believe in the love, God will let the light of God shine through you, and you won't be walking in outer darkness, but you'll be walking in inner joy, inner peace, inner power, in the name of Jesus. Oh, God, I really got to be ready to go now, amen. I told you that on my last point. I I, uh -uh. I got one more. Uh, you can trust the love uh, because God's love uh, is undeniable. Oh, uh, somebody need to get that. Uh, Nicodemus needed to get that. Uh, and I believe that saying some of us need to get that. Uh, that God's love uh, is undeniable. Amen. The church. Uh, I don't know if Nicodemus became a believer uh, that night. Oh, what a word that he got from the mouth of Jesus Christ. Uh, I don't know, but I don't know if he got if he got saved that night. And if not that night, I don't know when, but I do know one thing. I do know that Nicodemus hung around long enough to know that Jesus is why to break the love of God to mankind. It was real and undeniable. See, at first, Nicodemus identified Jesus as being sent by God because of the miracles. But at the end, but at the end, he identified Jesus because of the love. Somebody need to get that. And the fact that Nicodemus found out that he could trust the love. See, like some of us have found out when we were sick and Jesus healed us, that we could trust the love. Like some of us found out that when we had no peace and Jesus showed up as our prince of peace, that we could trust the love. Like some of us found out that when the enemy had us trapped and Jesus showed up and he made a way out of no way, we found out we could trust the love. But can I tell you, Nicodemus hung around long enough to find out that God's love is undeniable in Jesus Christ. And Jesus is love. Come on, somebody. See, because see, Nicodemus, Nicodemus was there when they would look, when they brought love into the judgment hall. Nicodemus was there when they brought 
him in before the council uh, and love didn't say uh, a mumbling word. Uh, Nicodemus was there uh, where they beat love all night long. Uh, um, but double love never stopped loving. Uh, they, Nicodemus was there uh, when they put a crown of thorns uh, on love's head. Uh, but love never stopped loving. Uh, um, the, uh, Nicodemus was there uh, when they made love carry his own cross uh, up the Calvary. Uh, but love still, uh, still never stopped loving. Uh, Nicodemus was there uh, when they nailed love to the cross. Uh, but love kept on loving. Uh, uh, can I tell you? Uh, uh, love. Uh, who, Nicodemus was there with love. Uh, who knew no sin uh, became sin uh, for you and me. Uh, and God uh, turned his back on him. Uh, but Nicodemus was there and saw it. Uh, and he saw that love uh, kept on loving. Uh, oh, can I tell you? Nicodemus was there uh, when they took that sword. Uh, and they pierced love in his side. Uh, uh, but he kept on loving. Nicodemus was there. Uh, when all uh, but they did all this to love. Uh, and look, uh, but here's the undeniable part. Uh, Nicodemus was there. Uh, he seen it all. Uh, he might he might even felt some of it. You know how somebody you like, uh, somebody you know, uh, you see it going through. Uh, and you kind of going through it with him. Uh, I can see it right there. He was there with him. Uh, he was there when they crucified my Lord. Uh, he was there when they crucified the love. Uh, but can I tell you, here's the undeniable part. Uh, yeah, he went through her, uh, but love her. Uh, look, uh, love knew her uh, that he was a part of the process uh, for man's deliverance. Uh, oh, God, oh, can I tell you, uh, if anybody ever needed to trust the process, it was Jesus. Oh, that process was long and hard. That process was torturous. That process beat him down, beat him up. That process caused him to hang bleed. And it was going to cause him to die. But can I tell you, Jesus trusted in the process for man deliverance. And that love, and that love that hung on the cross, that love understood that if he quit, if he quit the cross, that he would fail. And can I tell you, can I stand flat footed and tell you this? Love never fails. Come on, somebody. And Jesus never fails. So love didn't come down. He didn't come down until it was finished. He didn't come down until until love bought back mankind's redemption. He didn't come. He didn't come down until he could hang his head in the locks of his shoulder and cried and gave up the ghost. He didn't come down until love had done the work that God had sent him to do. It was, watch this, Nicodemus hung around long enough uh, to see that this love was real, uh, uh, that this love was undeniable. Uh, how do you know he hung around long enough? Uh, because it was Nicodemus that took him down off the cross. Uh, it was Nicodemus that laid him in the Bible tomb. Uh, it was Nicodemus that got his body ready to go in the tomb. Uh, it was Nicodemus that was there when he rolled the stone uh, in front of the tomb. Uh, it was Nicodemus that hung his head uh, and took that long walk back to his home, uh, thinking, oh my God, uh, my Savior that gave me the love, uh, he's gone. Uh, what am I going to do? Uh, I'm here to take it, Nicodemus. Uh, Nicodemus, if I was there with you right now, uh, I said, hang on in there, Nick. Uh, hang on in there, Nick. Uh, Nicodemus, I know you're wondering, uh, what in the world am I going to do? Uh, they took love, uh, the love that lifted me. Uh, they took love uh, that came after me. Uh, they, they took love uh, that wouldn't take no for an answer. Uh, they took love, they prayed for me. They took love, they took love, they loved me. And they took love and they killed love. I don't know what I'm going to do. But I'm here to tell you, hang on in that Nick. Trust the process, Nick. And Nick not only trust the process, but Nick, go ahead and trust the love. Because I believe you heard him say that I'll never leave you. I'll never forsake you. Yeah, they killed me. Yeah, they put me down. Yeah, they put me in a bar or two. Yeah, they put a stone in front of me. I know it's been one day, but I promise to never leave you. I know it's been two days, but I promise to never leave you. I am love, and love never fail. Love never forget. Love is not unseemly. Love is not puffed up. Love does not seek its own way. But love, 
love is here for you. And I know it's been two and a half days, but love never fails. But wait a minute, Nick. If you only hang in there and trust the love, lift up your head on your gates and let the King of Glory come in. Lift up your head on your gates and let the Lord of love come on in. Because on the third day, love got the rumbling, love got the shaking, stones got the moving, stones got the rolling, light got the shining, and love stuck that in the grave with our power in his hand. Love never fails, love never quits, love never stops, love never gives up, and love will never leave you. You can trust. In the love. Yeah. Come on, somebody, give God some praise. Yeah. Give God some praise. Give God some praise. Give God some praise right there. Yeah. Come on, we thank God today. Yeah. We can trust the love. Yeah. In the midst of your process. Yeah. In the midst of your process. Yes, Lord. Yes. Never forget. Mm. You can trust the love. Yeah. Today, the door to the church are open. What greater gospel is this thing I can preach other than Jesus? The good news was there in Jesus Christ. And John 3 16, for God so loved the world that gave his own. The God says, only unique, only unique son. And I couldn't believe it on him. Shall not perish. But everlasting life. Jesus came into the world not to condemn the world, but to save the world. What other, what better gospel is there? Is the love of God personified through the man that was on the earth, Jesus Christ? Him that walked, Emmanuel, that walked with us in the flesh. Showed the love. Showed that he was the love. Showed that love is truth. Love is giving. Love know you need me more than you know you need him yourself. And love that's undeniable. That even though chips may look like they was down, may look like all was lost, but love always makes a way. Amen. Always. This is the gospel. Love has made a way for you to be saved today. Amen. If you saved today, go ahead and give God some praise. Yeah. If you saved today, go ahead and give God the glory. If you saved today, give him the praise and the glory yes. because love did that. Yes. Love did that. When nothing else would help, love did that. Love did that. Love lifted me out of my sin. Yeah. I had a monk in the marriage. And you know what? Love is still lifting. He's still lifting. He's still lifting. He still wants to live. There might be some today that seek it deep in sin, but want to be lifted. If you want to be lifted today, let me tell you. This is the gospel. That God, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. What did he give Jesus to? He gave it to you to save you. But if you believe on him, you believe in him, you believe in who he is and what he did, you too can be saved. All you gotta do is take that belief and turn that belief around. That not only do you believe he did it, but that he did it for you. And then you can take advantage of it. Once you believe, you can access it. And how do you access the love of Jesus? You ask him to come into your heart. You ask him to forgive you for your sins. And he will. Today, today, it is your good fortune. And if you say, I want to be saved, you say, Pastor, I really, I really, I really need help with that. I, I don't know how to do it. God sent you to the right place. You scrolled around social media long enough to your family. Amen. This is the right place. Because I can show you. I can show you the love. And once I show you the love, it's up to you to do the rest. 
If you want to be saved today, if you want to be able to trust in the love of Jesus for the pardon of your sins, pray with me. <coughs> Repeat after me. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you. Thank you because you sent your son. You sent your son to earth to walk, to live, to die. He died for me. I believe in what Jesus did on that cross. I believe that love went to the cross and love would not come down till he was finished. I believe that love's finished work was to provide salvation for me. To provide me with the opportunity for eternal life. And the only way I can get that is if I ask him to forgive me for my sins. So God, Right now, I ask Jesus to forgive me for my sins. I ask Jesus to cleanse my heart. I ask Jesus to save me. I believe him. I believe in him. I believe in the love. Save me. Today, you just ask Jesus to come into your heart. And can I tell you, He just did. He just came into your heart. He just forgave you for your sins. Now, guess what? You say, Your name is now being written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Your name is written. And when your name is written, that's when the party starts. Because the Bible lets us know that the angels in heaven rejoice when one soul is saved and you just got saved. You need to go ahead and, and give God glory, give God praise right where you are. Thank God for saving you. And then do this. If anybody's around, tell them I just got saved. Text somebody I just got saved. Call somebody and say I just got saved. And they ask you, how do you know? Because I believe that Jesus came to save me. And I asked him to, and I know he did. And then do this. Make sure that, that you get with a Bible believing church. You need to fellowship with, with the saints of God, with the people of God. Yeah. We're here every Sunday, 11 o'clock. We're here. We're here virtually. We're here um, in person, 410 North Monroe Street, Brooklyn, the story of Jackson Wood. But join with a church that teaches the Bible, that teaches the gospel, that teaches of this Jesus. So you can learn more about him and learn more about the salvation that he has freely given you. And he got showing me, giving me. Because he is the love. And love don't quit. And love don't fail. And love don't lie. He is true to his word. He has saved you. Then I want you to do me do this. Get you a Bible. If you got a Bible, great. You got a physical Bible. If you don't, you got a phone. You can Google the book of John, NIV version. Start reading that. Or you'll find out so much about this Jesus. But we, we thank God for you. Come on, y'all. Let's give God praise for the those that he has saved today. He has believed that folk are getting saved. Folk are getting saved on this broadcast, on this Facebook Live, on, on the YouTube offering. Amen. Folk are getting saved as you share these messages with other people. Because we always preach the gospel. We always preach salvation. No matter what we're talking about. If Jesus ain't mixed in it, something wrong with it. Jesus is in it. Jesus is always in it. Because he is the reason we get the blessing. He is the reason we have the insight, the revelation, the empowerment, the anointing. He is the reason. And we want others to get right where we are. We want others to get freely, freely give as you can freely receive. Come on, somebody. Give God some praise. We love God for God. They have, they, they have honored God with their faithfulness and decided to make Jesus their choice. And give God glory. We're going to get ready to go down from here. Amen. 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 We do have another service. Amen. Right after this. But well, come on, let's stand. We're going to have our benediction. Do your heart feel good today? Yeah.
Do you believe you can trust the love? Amen. I believe you can trust the love. Amen. The love is good. Love is kind. Love is love is Jesus. Amen. 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 Come on, somebody tell the Lord I love you. I love you, Lord. Thank you, God. Let's look to God and be dismissed. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord God, for you, God, and all that you do. God, we thank you for the power of your grace, your anointing, your love. God, we thank you for your son, Jesus, the way maker of God. He is the true living of the devil, the bright and morning star. He is our all in all. He is love, and love never fails. We thank you for that. Thank you, God, for this message. Thank you, God, for this service. Thank you, God, for this worship. Thank you, God, for your people that are called by your name. May our God be blessed. You bless your name as you bless us, God, as we get ready to lead this part of our service, God. God, never dismiss us from your presence. We thank you, God, and rest in the battle with us, God. Deliver us, keep us, bless us. In Jesus' name we pray. Let the household of faith say amen. 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 Be blessed. Peace.